Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, and welcome again to St. Mark Amy Church. We thank you for joining us for our digital worship service today, and we pray that God has been continuing to bless you, your family, and your loved ones. Today, we are blessed of the Lord to have none other than the Reverend Dr. Kimberly Brown bring us a message from the Lord today. Please pray with her as God strengthened her to deliver this powerful message today. We hope that you receive it and that it will be a comfort to you in your life and whatever you're going through, there is still hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and God keep you as you watch the message today. All who are gathered with us this morning, I greet you with the joy of the Lord because it is my strength. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father and our God, I thank you for this preaching moment. Allow your anointing to fall fresh. Speak a word to your people. Speak a word to your people. Speak a word to your people. This is your daughter's prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning is coming from the 36th Psalm, verses 5 through 10. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O oh God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights, for with you is the fountain of light, of life. In your light, we see light. Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let us dwell this morning on the thought, the steadfast love of God. In the life of the Christian church, we are in the season of epiphany. Epiphany is the oldest season of the church next to Easter. During the season of Epiphany, we are rejoicing of the light coming into darkness or God coming into the world. The glory of God is seen in Jesus. The season of Epiphany also enables us to reflect on the awesomeness of God and God's steadfast love for us. As we consider the presence of God in our lives, it's fitting that the season of Epiphany is so close to the beginning of a new year. Many of us have excitement and anticipation for a new year or new beginning. Many of us want to leave behind the hurt, the pain, the disappointment, and challenges of the past year. For many of us, we have become weary of this pandemic of the coronavirus or COVID-19 that the world has endured. For almost two years, we've been physically limited in our travels and everyday activities. It has taken a toll on us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We look forward to a positive change in the new year. We were hopeful with the vaccination and booster shots that we would be able to manage the virus, let alone have the opportunity to return to some of our activities. Yet it appears with this new wave of infections and new mutations of the virus, we are experiencing yet another setback. Yet during these times of change and challenge, we as people of faith can find ourselves clinging to our faith even more. We can find ourselves looking to God for more strength and hope. When we look at this 36th Psalm written by David, we are encouraged to reflect on the awesomeness of God and God's steadfast love for all of us. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. God's love for us is ever present and it is steadfast. God's love is steadfast. It is unwavering. God's love is constant. God's love is loyal. God's love is firm. God's love is resolute. God's love for us is constant and will not change. It is the love of God for us that is empowering to us. When we look at what has transpired in the world, it can be overwhelming. We have experienced a global pandemic. Our nation has had multiple crises happening at the same time. 
political upheaval, political divisiveness, financial instability, religious divisions, racism, sexism, and classism exposed and placed front and center of our lives. All of this happening at once. We have experienced emotions, including, including anger, fear, and sadness. We also found ourselves challenged to stand on our faith and to be advocates for fairness, justice, and equality. It has not been easy to stand on your faith and regard each other as brothers and sisters keepers, our brothers and our sisters keeper, but when we've been in opposition to one another. But when we consider God's love for us, it challenges us to love one another as fellow human beings and members of the same household of faith as children of God. God's love for us encourages us to reach out to, to one another as human beings. Yes, we can disagree. And yes, we don't always like our, the behavior of someone or somebody's attitude, but our faith calls us to stretch ourselves to regard one another as children of God. This is and has not been easy for many of us during these trying times. Yet God's love for us is what compels us to push ourselves to be better and do better. David had to face the reality that his own son, Absalom, wanted to take his kingdom from him. David could have sought revenge, but he didn't. David's love of God and compassion toward his son enabled him not to harm him. But David tells Joab, one of his commanders, be gentle with the young man, Absalom, for my sake. David showed his compassion rather than take revenge on his son. David was trying to demonstrate an example of fairness to his people as king, but also showing love of a parent to a child. David set another example when King Saul wanted to kill David out of jealousy. But David said to Abishai, don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Again, David respected Saul's position as king, the chosen king by God. David let it be known that only God could punish Saul. And in either situation, David was not showing weakness, but strength by showing compassion and godly love. It takes more strength to show kindness and fairness when others are not kind to us. You can still stand up for yourself, but at the same time, show fairness. It is spiritual maturity that enables us to recognize showing godly love is not weakness, but trust in God. In this 36th Psalm, David reminds us of the steadfast love of God and reminds us that God is our provider. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delight. God is our provider. When we look at the challenges that we face during this pandemic, we know that God has kept us. For many of us, we have seen folks struggle with having food on their tables and keeping a roof over their heads. But many of us have been blessed to not go without food and shelter. Many of us have been able to keep a job and work safely from our homes. And we've reached out to be a blessing to others. We recognize with much prayer and thanks that indeed God has kept us. David was being chased by King Saul and undermined by his own son, Absalom, yet he did not hesitate to acknowledge the presence of God in his life. David could have been vindictive, but he was thankful for the blessings of his life. And like David, when we step back and pause, we can be thankful for what God has done for us done for us. We've had time to be quiet, to be still before the Lord. We've been praying more, meditating more on the scripture. We've had time to assess what is really important to us. Our relationship with God has sustained us, and we have been reminded that God is with us. God has not left us. Yes, we may have lost loved ones. Yes, We've had some financial challenges. Yes, we are still living in uncertain times, but what is certain is that God is with us. We are reminded of God's steadfast love, that God is our provider, but also that God is our protection. 
Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright and heart. God's protection of us is another way God shows his love for us. God has sustained us and kept us during the storms of our lives, not just during the pandemic, but when we think back over our lives, many of us have a testimony to the goodness and protection of God. A relationship ended because that person may not have been right for you or they didn't have good intentions. You thought you lost an opportunity of a job, but God provided an even better opportunity. You thought somebody had your back, but God showed you you need to step away from that person. You wanted to lash out in anger at some, but God gave you a peace to know when to step away. Beloved, God is our protection. He is the source of our strength. And while King Saul was chasing David, God provided David with safety and help. David didn't want for anything and trusted God throughout the situation. This psalm reminds us that God is a loving God. God is steadfast in his love. God is our provider. God is our protection. And when you sit back and reflect on this 36th Psalm of David, you might even find yourself identifying with the words of the hymn writer who wrote shackled by a heavy burden, knee, a load of guilt and shame. Then the head of Jesus touched me and now I'm no longer the same. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me. He touched me. Something happened. And now I know he touched me. And he made me whole. The steadfast love of God. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you and be with you always. Amen. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. What a powerful message from Reverend Dr. Kimberly Brown. We thank her so much for sharing that message with us today, you know, uh, into this new year as we continue, uh, my brothers and sisters, to move forward by faith. Now, there may be someone that heard today's message. You may be asking yourself, you know, what must I do to have the Lord Jesus Christ in my life? Well, all you have to do, my brothers and sisters, just simply do this. Just repeat after me. So, oh, Lord, here I am. I stand as a sinner, Lord, saved by your grace. I ask you, God, right now, knowing, God, my condition, knowing my circumstances, God, knowing my shortcomings, Lord, that I cannot do this thing alone, that I need you in my life, Lord. I surrender all to you, Lord, and I ask you to come into my life right now, Lord, to save me. Lord Jesus Christ, I accept you as my personal Savior on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, brothers and sisters, welcome to the kingdom of God. We continue to pray with you and ask that God will strengthen you in your new relationship with him. And also we stand ready here at St. Mark to do that. You can join in with our Bible study, you know, our prayer meeting and our church school so you can continue to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can also just give us a call. Let us know that you accepted the Lord today. Give us a call if you stand looking for a church home. We stand ready here to assist you in whatever may, you may need. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to keep you as you continue to strive to do every day what the Lord has put in your heart to do as you continue to strengthen your relationship with him. God bless you and God keep you until we see you again. Amen.